Good morning, everybody. It is so lovely to be here at the Tour Center to have our weekly Chomish class where we meet every Thursday morning at 9.30. We are temporarily here at the Torch Center till we're our host uh, organization, our host partner, Congregation Beth Yashurn, is going to be hopefully back up and running. Uh, rumor has it that January they'll be up and running. We'll still have to wait and see if they're able to contain our crowds um, on uh, Thursday mornings. But till then, we're happy to be here in the magnificent Torch Center. And I wanted to share a thought on this week's Parsha. This week's Parsha is very interesting in that we have, between every Parsha, between Bereshus and Noach, there's a separation between the Parshas. Between Noach and Lech Mechad, there's a separation between the Parsha. Between each portion, there's a separation. And the reason for that separation is to first indicate that it's a, it's a new, it's a new a new uh, stage, but there's more than just that. The reason our sages tell us is because it's sort of giving a time to think. It's giving a time to to uh, to reevaluate or to re to, to collect your thoughts. Moses is being told by God, and everything is every word of the Torah, every letter of the Torah is being dictated by the Almighty. And Moses is writing it all down. And at the end of every parsha, okay, he has a little breather, so to speak. You know, just collect your thoughts and move on. But at the end of this week's parsha, at the end of this week's parsha, there's no separation. It just goes right into, you know, from Vayigas straight into Vayichi. It goes straight. There's no separation. So, our sages tell us an amazing thing. That is, that what happened in this week's parasha? Rashi tells us that because Jacob died in Vayichi, in the next week's parasha, because Jacob, our, you know, our third of our patriarchs, passed away in that week's parasha, we sort of, it says, Nistemoy name Shu Yisrael, the, the eyes of the Jewish people sort of were, 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 were shut. And because they were shut, so to speak, the portions are shut as well in that there's no, there's no separation between them. But I heard an amazing idea as follows. In every week's portion, Moses would stop, reevaluate, collect his thoughts, think about a plan, right? And then Mo God would continue to dictate the Torah to Moses. And Moses would write it as God dictated. And of course we know Moses is not allowed to write anything in the Torah that God didn't tell him to write. And in, an amazing part of this, by the way, is that there are certain stories that are being told that there's no way for Moses to have known. Right? For example, you have Bilam and Balak who are scheming to curse the Jewish people and what do we find? We find that Moses tells, tells, writes this whole story, right? He writes the whole story. Now imagine you're sitting there and God is telling you, Moses, to write the story of how your enemy or your adversary is going on top of a mountain overlooking the Jewish, the Jewish, Jewish encampment and arguing about how to curse the Jewish people. Something you had no idea really happened, right? Just as a side note, this is one of the one of the praises that we give to the Almighty in thanking Hashem, thanking God, even for the miracles we don't know about. Here, God is protecting the Jewish people from these curses, even though we didn't even know it was happening. It was happening, you know, who knows where? He's standing on some mountain saying, "I want to curse those people," and God says, "I'm sorry, you can't do that to my people." Right? And every curse became a blessing. But it's an amazing, an amazing idea that you write. Okay. Now what do we have in this week's parsha? The Jewish people come to Egypt. This is the parsha. In our parsha is when the Jewish people descend to Egypt. And the question is, 
How in the world are they going to get out? That Moses has no answer for. Not only Moses has no answer for, there's no way for any human being to figure out a solution. Here you have the greatest superpower in the world. Egypt was the greatest, most powerful nation in the world. Taking the 70 Jewish individuals, which later became 3.2 million Jews 210 years later, and enslaved us. So, when the Jewish people go into Egypt, Moses says, I, I have no idea. It doesn't make sense to me that they will ever get out. So he says, no, no time to think. Let's just continue to the next portion. So there's no separation between the Parshas, between Vayigash and Vayichi. There's nothing to think about. Now, a similar idea we see in the Shema. Every morning and every evening we say the Shema. And after we say, Hashem Elokechem Emet, after we say the last three words of the Shema, in the morning we say, V'yatsiv v'nachon, and it is firm, and it is correct, right? And at night, what do we say? V'emunah kol zot. And with all faith. The question is, why do we have different, different parts of the prayer in the morning and the evening? Right after the Shema, we say two different things. So I heard a Hasidic uh, sage say a beautiful idea. He says, in the day where it's light and you can see what's going on, we have a confidence, we have a firmness, we know, we know we're confident. But at night when things are dark, when things are gloomy, when you don't know what's, what the results are going to bring about, then we have the emunah then it's all faith. So what Moses is showing us here is that the truth is the only time we feel confident is when we convince ourselves that we know what's going to happen. But the truth is, is that we never know. There are only times that God takes away all those uh, comforts and we, we suddenly come to this realization, I really am not in control. Never. See, we convince ourselves because, you know, we know what's coming into our account. We know what's going out of our account. We know what we're, we, we make the decisions on what we spend our money on and what we don't spend our money on. What's in our budget, what's not in our budget. People are very organized and how, well, guess what? Comes a curveball. And we remember how fragile we are. We remember how delicate we are and that we don't have all the solutions. We, all we need is one hiccup. One hiccup. And we suddenly realize, hey, it's not exactly as easy as I thought it was. God has taken care of everything for us. And that's what we have in this week's partial. It's this realization. It's an epiphany. We don't have control. And the more faith we have, the more confidence we have. The more trust we have in the Almighty the less worry we have. At the end of Adon Olam we say, Hashem li lo ira. Hashem is for me, I have nothing to fear. If I know with confidence that Hashem is there for me, it means I believe in Hashem. I put my trust in Hashem. I have full faith in Hashem. I have nothing to worry about. He's going to take care of it. It's like a child, it's the equivalent of a child who puts their, their trust in their, in their parents and they know their parents won't wrong them. Uh, hopefully in a healthy relationship that's the case. In the healthiest of relationships, one with us, between, between us and Hashem, we know that Hashem is reliable. We know that Hashem fulfills His word. Hashem knows exactly what we need and what we don't need. And Hashem is always there to take care of us. So when times are shaky, when, we, when the times are uncertain, when we don't know what's going to happen, Hashem li lo ira. Hashem is for me. I have nothing to fear. Hashem is with me. Hashem is taking care of me. Lo ira, I have nothing to worry about. 
the higher our level of, of relationship with God is, the more emunah, the more trust and faith we have in Hashem, the less our worries. I think it's the greatest tool for stress relief. I have my personal experience, which I'll share offline, of how I learned the hard way not to stress out. Just leave it to Hashem. And he's, got you, he's got you covered. Don't worry. He's got big shoulders. He can handle it. He can make miracles happen in seconds. All right? So we invite the rest of you, uh, our dear friends online, to join us here live at the Torch Center. Uh, just about every day of the week we have class here. You can check our, our list of programs at the, at the um, on, on our website on torchweb.org. But I just want to make one quick announcement. And that is on January 3rd, Wednesday, January 3rd, we are uh, launching, relaunching a new program here in, in Houston, which is Partners in Torah. And as you see here, it's hard for you to see online, but someday... She'll be smarter than you. Start learning now. Um, our children are learning. Our children are growing. We need to do the same for ourselves to enrich our homes, to enrich our families. And here we go. Triple venti, half, non, uh, half sweet, non-fat, caramel frap with a side of Torah. Um, yes, we do have uh, coffee here at the Torch Center at all times. But it's, it's... I have one more here. One more marketing piece for this Partners in Torah program, which is much like a high five, learning Torah works better with two people. So I urge you all to join us. Uh, you can register online on our website. You will have a private, personal study partner here at the Torch Center on Wednesday nights to learn with you any topic that you're interested in in Judaism. So it's going to be here launching on January 3rd. I urge you all to join this program. It's going to be a phenomenal program a great opportunity to ask all of your questions, build relationships, and have a great time. So, without any further ado, we're going to continue with our live, in-person program now. Everyone out there, you're welcome to join us here at the Torch Center for all of our programs, especially this one, 9.30s on, on Thursday. Thank you, and have a terrific day and a good Shabbos.